folks. Well, we shot in this fine morning to get to work in time for the delivery man who apparently is coming between 9.38 and 10.38 to deliver the order of SS Brewtech pots from the malt miller. And when we got here, the shutters were up, padlock on of course, so the door was secure. Uh, and I found a GC supplies box on the table. So Stuart must have been in before us this morning, indicating that he may have had an accident and soiled his bedclothes at home. So uh, yeah, he must have been here before us and uh, took delivery of this. So it's a bonus, but we are still indeed anticipating the delivery from the malt miller. But nevertheless, we'll get stuck into this GC one. And I tell you what, folks, I only put the order in yesterday. They really are some of the quickest, uh, they are one of the quickest deliveries from any other business. Am I gonna say this correctly or what? You know what I'm trying to say. They deliver swift, they do. So here we are. There's the packing list. So everything in here is actually for these stainless steel pots when they arrive. And I'm keen to start work on them, but I'm gonna wait until everything's on site because we are going to do a build video. So to run you through what we've ordered, we have three two and a quarter inch stainless steel BSP half sockets. I'll show you what these are for. If you just bear with, folks, bear with. Okay, these half sockets are to accept these Incloy stainless steel heating elements available from Screwfix and Tool Station for less than £20. So if you burn them out, then you don't need to worry too much about finding a replacement. Whereas the squiggly ones that people use are in the region of £160 each. Now, a lot of people might say, well, it's got a brass insert on it. Well, if you look on my professional brew kettle that we've built, that also has a brass insert on it and it stands up to the CRP procedure and this one is going to be seeing much less harsh chemicals. So there you go, you can see how that fits onto there. The half inch BSP socket screws right in to the heating element. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then we have a three inch tri-clamp ferrule. That goes on there also and just by coincidence the OD is the same as the two and a quarter inch BSP ferrule. So now we have an element, once this is welded, we have an element on a tri-clamp. And then of course, in here we should have some more tri-clamps. There we go. So that tri-clamp there will be on the tank. So we've just basically inserted the element into the tank. Oh, of course. In between, you must have a gasket, so these uh, seals are pennies, well pounds, a couple of quid per seal, and then in here somewhere, indeed we do, we have the clamp, and then this clamp should snugly fit around the OD of the two ferrules. Oh, there he is, giving us our fitting, element fitting for the tank. So let me just unwind this. Got a long thread on tour this morning, folks. There we go. And then that is how it would connect to the tank. And then of course, just to take it out, we just pull her out and uh, Robert's your mother's brother. So we've got three of those. And then in here also, these are stainless steel half inch sockets, which um, I'll be using on the tanks for any fittings that I want to add. So we'll just weld a socket on. Might even cut them down actually, because you can get two sockets out of one of these and have a half socket. And uh, we can just, for instance, the taps. 
we could just weld them onto the tanks and you've got somewhere for fittings. These are double ended sailor, um, half inch BSP threaded nipples, 70 mil long. So the same again here, you can cut these down in half if you like, weld them on, or they're really good for just extending any of these connections. Relatively cheap as well from GC, so if you folks need them, they're a couple of quid each, they're worth getting. Uh, we've got some tri-clamp blanks, so when you take your element out, you can put your blank in there, and that works in exactly the same way as the element, you put your clamp around, and then you can continue to CIP your tanks without having that brass ferrule or that element in there. And you can take your element away then, and you can clean it at the sink, at waist height, at your leisure, without having to be either in a tank or on your knees. And then this, finally, is just a full pack of 2 inch RJT nuts, because I'm running low on them. So these are more for stock, for the build on the new fermenters. So, uh, there we go. So that, folks, is pretty much what 250 quid gets you. But the money here, the money here is in the BSP sockets and the tri-clamp fittings. But look at that for quality, 316. They are the best on the market from GC, without a doubt. So cheers, Andy, if you're watching. Anyway. Let's get on with another project. Ladies and gentlemen, it has arrived. This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe, in our world here, there lives a happy little milk. Yes, exciting does not even come close to this one. We have four boxes, actually but three of them are the main event and we're about to start unboxing. Do you fancy coming along for the ride? Oh yes! Okay, we'll do it on the table here where you can see everything. So I know we've got two 20 gallon brew kettles. So we'll start with the first one I pick up. Oh yes, oh folky folks, oh look at this, so it's in a double box, maybe I should have uh, taken some more arty farty shots of the second box. Well at least we know it's good protective packaging on it. Oh gosh. Oh, check him out. Yeah, I think I'll get these outer boxes off first, and then we'll go ahead with the rest of the unboxing. This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. In our world here, they live a happy little mountain. Here we are now, that's a pretty sight, ain't it, folks? Absolutely is. Let's just get one of these boxes on the floor to give us some room to maneuver. And we'll start across here with the brew kettle 20 gallon, numero uno. So we've got some money invested in this. I'm not gonna lie to you folks. All this kit is the best part of a grand, which has been made possible, of course, by YouTube and Patreon. So I'd like to extend my gratitude to everybody out there who's supported the channel so far and allowed us to make these leaps and bounds. So the first thing we're gonna to come to is the lid. So this 
is one hell of a lid, quite frankly. That's solid. Stainless steel. The welds on it look fantastic. In here, we also have a little bit of marketing gumph and a quick start guide, should you need it. And then, folks, indeed we do have the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the main event. Would you just look onto her? She is one hell of a pot. This is probably the biggest brew pot uh, I've ever owned that's actually made for purpose and it's not been uh, a homemade job. So we'll leave that there, we'll put the lid on and we'll have a look what else is in the box. Because down here we have a little triangular shaped package and in there I assume is the tube, the trug dam, the all important three piece ball valve, weldless fitting, a couple of bungs, and uh, that's, that's little onions, folks. That's little onions, right. Let's move on to the infusion mash tun because this is what I'm really keen to get a look at. This is where the money is, frankly. So it took a lot of research and a lot of persuasion for me to go down the route of SS Brewtech. But looking at the quality of it now, it's here. I'm glad I did. Here we go. So we're in. Again, immediately we're greeted by the lid. Now that is a hefty lid. Insulated, double insulated, hefty lid. I'll pop that somewhere it's not going to get damaged while we continue to unpack. And the packaging, plenty of foam. Again, in here we have a quick start guide and all that kind of jazz. And then if I just slide this off the table. Oh, there we go, folks. It comes with a sight glass. No doubt, already attached. That's really well manufactured in here, actually. I'll show you in the tanks for a little bit of a closer look in a minute or two. But yeah, that's an impressive looking fella. Two sight glasses. I wonder what the point of that is. We have a little bit of a bow in here. Is that a foot? That could be a foot. Let me just have a look underneath. Yeah, that looks to be a foot that's uh, come loose. We'll put that back on. Get rid of the bag. Again, we have a triangular shaped box. Let me just turn this round to the front so you guys can take it in. There we go. Let's have a look what's in the box. Well, we have a couple more feet, so obviously they're thinking they're going to lose these over time. We have a thermowell, an O-ring, a weldless fitting, bulkhead fitting, and another three-piece um, doodly-doo. We also have a thermometer in degree C, which is perfect a rubber gasket and I'm hoping down in the bottom of here somewhere we have a false bottom and indeed we do there she is right at the bottom of the package a beautiful 1.2 mil thick as well this is this is as good as the stuff I've got on the pro kit stainless steel false bottom so we can get that in without scratching the edges. Oh, you little beauty. It looks spot on, folks. It looks spot on. Right, and then third and final box. Let's pop the lid on here. I'll open it down here and I'll just pop it up on the top because it should be a carbon copy of the one that we've just unpacked. So we've got the lid. 
a sec. We've got this quick start guide in there, a couple of silicon sachets, and the wonderful pot itself. Well, there we go. I must say, I'm kind of pleased that I went with this. Looking at what we've got here, there's the fitting, there's the lid. Right then, folks. That's a good looking set, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the ancillary fittings on, and we'll just have a look what she looks like, all put together. So I've been merrily plodding along, folks, putting all of the uh, bits and bobs onto the tanks. And uh, then it dawned on me, no point tightening everything up, is there? Because all this stuff's going to have to come off anyway when uh, we put the track lamp fittings on, because I'm not going to weld it with anything fitted. Uh, so yeah, I was talking to Tom just the other day, and he asked, what, what are you doing for elements in the pot? And I said, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to my pots as uh, what we did to yours. And his instant reply was, what, fuck them up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. So yeah, we have to, uh, the next stage is to fuck the pots up, essentially. <laughs> so there we go, that's everything on there. That's the, uh, the boil kettle. And uh, what we want to do next, I don't think we're gonna do it today, uh, I need to figure out what I need where, for instance. Um, the front, we may put a thermometer on there, that's a possibility. Um, the mash tun has one, but it only goes up to 68 degrees, which doesn't sound right to me. Uh, then we're going to have to put, obviously, in a whirlpool port, or perhaps even recirculation port for the HLT or the boil kettle, either one. And then on the side, we're going to have to mount our tri clamps like that. So we're going to have to drill holes and uh, get these get these mounted. See which is the best way for them to go in, so we don't end up clashing because that's the problem that we had with Tom's. Uh, there's not much room inside the pot for two of these, so you know, as they say on Ghostbusters, don't cross the streams and all that. So uh, we want to avoid that at all costs. But that's everything on them, folks, anyway. So there you can see we've got the boil kettle, or HLT, mash tun and HLT, or boil kettle, whichever one we decide to use it for. Um, this is a nanometer, apparently. So what happens is if the two liquid levels are the same, then you haven't got any suction on your grain bed. And if one of them starts to drop, and you're sparging too fast. Clever little gimmick. And uh, I've also added just a couple of uh, snap lock fittings because I've got them in stock. But there's definitely things that I need to order. Like I need a 90 degree turn on here for the mash return because I don't want to have that sticking out sideways. So we'll have it coming down here with a handle on it with a, with a lever valve like this one. So there's lots to think about folks, but I don't want to get too distracted with the SS Brewtech pots because it's not a project that we're gonna be starting straight away. I want to get everything together first and then we'll do a series of build videos to get the whole thing up and running, including a table such as this one. We might even use that one, I don't know yet, I don't know. It's got a nice bit of space on it, hasn't it? So uh, anyway, I'm just gonna put these to bed. We'll take a few shots of it before I do that and uh, then we'll crack on with some other jobs.
dip me bloody tip dinner. So I've just taken a little bit of time there to weld a foot onto this diaphragm valve simply because uh, when we start to utilise this piece of kit you'll see what the problem would have been so we're going to come off of here onto the sight glass so we can see what's going on in a, in a yeast harvest for instance. So now we've already got quite a bit of weight on that particular valve and it gets a lot worse. So when we add the diaphragm valve itself, that is where the majority of the weight actually is. So what we're trying to do is mitigate that by incorporating this little adjustable foot that I've made here. So once you've got that section on and tightened up on the tri-clamp then we can lift to take the weight off and inside there's another another piece of steel in there that's adjustable so we find the the height that we want to be at and then lock her off with that thumb bolt and then all of a sudden the whole system is now self-supporting and we're not putting any unnecessary burden on the elbow back here in the tank. So then, we could open the valve and screw out the diaphragm and start to harvest yeast from the tank when, uh, when indeed we get to that stage in the brewing process. And the reason I've made this leg adjustable is because the tanks on the other side, the original tanks that we fabricated, I've got a slightly different valve height to this one and sometimes the floor is a little bit uneven as well so at least doing it this way we can ensure that we're not putting any strain whatsoever on any of the elbows or the tank welds so in order for us to continue with some of the other projects that we've got in mind uh, I need to pick up some MDF and strangely enough the cheapest place I've found for that turns out to be B&Q provided you have a trade point card so we're going to go across to the closest one that's got a fair amount of stock which is Doncaster set ourselves up with an account there and hopefully pick up a load of uh, a load of timber to continue these projects like lagging these tanks good point actually I need some insulation while we're there Right, that was a scorching out here. That was a nice little walk around. B&Q trade point, we're now 300 quid lighter and uh, about a dozen sheets of MDF heavier. I'll tell you what folks, it's 24 degrees in the brewery and that's inside in the shade and the brewery is usually pretty cool. So uh, we've just got back with a load of MDF. It's 10 to five. But I've just had a phone call from Froggy, he's coming over with some bits and bobs. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to kind of get stuck into cutting all of this timber. So this is for the furniture, the bedroom furniture at home. 
internal shelving and what will be wardrobe doors eventually shaker style maybe so yeah I'm gonna actually hate cutting all of this MDF because it's the worst kind of timber to cut How lucky am I? I can tell you how lucky I am. I've just been cutting all this MDF down to size, ready for the uh, for the fitted wardrobe build. That's the little plan, and uh, who should rock up but our good friend Froggy? And knowing that I've been in a pickle the past few days, well, look what he's brought me, folks. Check it out. It's only a freaking Lincoln Electric welding helmet. Can you believe it? So I am super duper stoked to now be the owner of probably the most expensive welding helmet that uh, I've ever gone and worn. So I must say a massive thanks to Froggy for bringing me this. And... Uh, well, in order to say thanks a little bit, we've been up to the pub and had a couple of pints, but alas, he wasn't able to stop tonight. He had prior engagements. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, mate. Really, really stoked. It's a freaking Lincoln Electric. I'm over the moon, boys and girls. I'm over the moon. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is, um, I'm gonna continue to cut a little bit more of this, well, I'm marking out at the minute, actually on the MDF so so I'm going to continue to do a little bit more marking out on here uh, maybe do a little bit of drilling and gluing we'll see it is quarter past seven I just don't fancy going home tonight I fancy cracking on with this job there's nothing wrong at home by the way that came out wrong home's perfectly fine I just really want to get this project kind of to a stage where I can take something back this week. So the more I do on this today, the less we'll have to do tomorrow. behind me because I thought I heard the door go. Gemma's on her way to pick me up. So I've had a pint or two and obviously I can't drive now. Plus I don't have a car here. So I might as well take advantage of the situation. I'm enjoying a Fantisma by Magic Rock Brewery folks. Whilst I pilot and countersink the holes for this section of the fitted wardrobe. When Gemma arrives, I'm just gonna jump in the car, go home and quickly edit this video because obviously time is getting on now, it's eight o'clock gone. And uh, we'll have to see you on tomorrow's vlog, folks, because we're swiftly running out of seconds on the clock. Anyway, cheers for today. SS Brew Tech, folks, very excited. Stay tuned for more of the build. We'll see you tomorrow.